Hey guys, what's up? I'm here with Elvin. I got to do it. El Bandido. Yeah. Brito. What's up, brother? Good, man. How you doing? Good, man. The house. So you're really you're, busy. You're, I see you're live from the jungle camp itself, yep. man. Poolside. <laughs> yeah, pool, <laughs> poolside. <laughs> I love it, brother. I mean, we so yeah. we, we we caught up. Uh, we caught up in Belfast at yeah, the the Hall time. of Fame stuff, and yeah. man, we had a good time. We had you on yeah. the Loudmouth show. Yeah, we got flying um, in. Yeah. yeah. So I what's uh I, I I know we talked about it a little bit, and I guess uh you know for the people you know maybe who aren't quite caught up, you know, what have you been up to since the last fight, man? And when can we expect you, you know, to get kind of straight to the point, when can we expect you again? I mean, uh, after my last cap, I, I immediately jumped in uh, helping with uh, Chris Charles' camp. Yep. So I, I didn't, I was finally, when I got back from his training camp, I got some rest. and then. But I immediately got back to work because we're working with the community to start a new gym here in, uh, in Mount Nabo. I'm building the jungle camp at the same time. And at the same time, we're building our house. So we have all these different projects going on at the same time. Plus, I have my own business. So, wow. Which has been busy, 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 you know, plus the animals. So I get up, I get up at like 536, feed the animals, and then we're just going. You know, we're going. I get my run in. If not, I get in the evening. You know, we, we've been trying to keep our training. We've been training regularly. But we're trying to keep our training kind of like just idle, a good level, staying you know, keeping a good mileage going, keeping some good reps going. So, because yeah. we're going to be having a couple guys coming out here to do some training camp. So, like, we, we, I don't want to, like, flat, flat, you know, I don't want to peak too too early. I don't want to get injured because I, I already know from my own experience that if you train too hard, too long, you just start breaking down. So, like, I want to I want to make sure I hit my peak. Well, I, I was just ta talking with uh, Quentin, and he was talking yeah. about he's trying to come down there. Oh, yeah, no, Quentin, Quentin, yeah, he, he, he's the one to come down here. He'd be great to have out here. I'm trying to get guys to come out here that are, like, going to push me. You know, guys that I'm going to have to chase. You know, that's really, like, the guys I want. You know, I, um, that work ethic is really important. You know, it's just having guys really push you to the next level. I, I want to have uh, guys come down here. Lorenzo said he was going to be out here, too, so it'd be cool to have Lorenzo. But he's just – he's so much more athletic and stronger and, you know, fat yeah. than me. So it'd be good to have a guy like that chain with me because I'm trying to be a champ. So I don't want to – I want to always have to be chasing somebody. I want to always be like just pushing myself to, you know, I can't just be like, okay, this is good enough. I want to always be like, okay, I want to do more. So I got to make sure I, I surround myself with the right kind of people, not just with the sparring aspect, you know, there's a technical aspect, but there's also the athletic aspect and the mental aspect where you, you got to be on point, you know, <laughs> especially at what, a championship level. You know? What what makes, uh, you know, because we're always seeing fighters that are coming down there and wants to train. What, what do you think makes it um... – I don't know what 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 makes your 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 gym and what you do so special that it makes these other guys want to literally you know fly across the world to to come train with you. What do you think makes it different? Well, you know, obviously the environment because we're just sorry, my hands in the way. We're just fighting. We're just focused on fighting. It's just you know we're training and that's all we do all day. But also it's like the proof is in the pudding. You know, like people come out here and they do the training or they see me fight. Or they spar with me and they get the work in, and you know it doesn't matter. You see, I, I you know ever since we met, I'm like, yeah, I'll talk about what I do, but I'd rather show you. You know, I'd rather right. show you what I do because the right. proof is in the pudding, especially with something as new as bare knuckle. And uh, I, everybody has their own method methodology and their own method that they're trying to do in the sport. And uh, you know, everybody feels like they got something to learn from each other. And and uh, I'm one of those guys with people like, hey, Elvin, you know, like I think you know if we train together, we'll we'll, we'll be will be better. You know, a lot of guys want to be better fighters or they want to look at different stuff and they see, like, us coming together and getting some training in as, you know, we make ourselves better and we uh, feel, you know, we got something to offer, you know, as far as bare knuckle, we got 21 rounds now and, uh, and bare knuckle, so we got experience. You know, we got some good coaching. We got some good methodology um, and we train for bare knuckle. It's not a boxing gym trying to fight bare knuckle or MMA gym doing bare knuckle. We literally do bare knuckle training with bare knuckle in mind. We spar two minute rounds. We total line every time, you know. We do shark tanks. So you always got a fresh guy every die every round. And uh, we have, you know, I think it's a really people once the, people get a taste of the methodology and the way we tr the way we approach the bare knuckle fighting. You know, they they want to integrate that into your, their style. It's not that they uh, obviously I can't teach you how to fight with me. It's not about me teaching people how to fight like me. Right. 
because I find my own way. But right. it's the method. It's the my, mental approach. You know, when, when you're doing me, mixed martial arts, you, mixed martial arts, you have to have a good mental game to go into mixed martial arts. Same thing with with uh, with boxing. And it's when you do self defense. You, if you have to have the, the completely different mindset, if you go into a, a self defense scenario with an MMA mindset, mindset, you can get hurt. You know. Yeah. Um, and uh, vice versa in any way. So you have to understand the situation you're getting into, you know. So really, it's the method. Uh, to me, you know, that's what I think. It's the most attractive thing. And obviously, we're out here in the jungle, and there's nothing to, you know, the, yeah. your only company is just pain and soreness and just having to do this shit over and over again and, and just thinking yeah. about the release when you finally fight, you know. You're just happy to be there. And I'm always happy to be there when I fight because I know I – you can take a break, <laughs> you know. Uh, so it, it's good stuff, you know. I, I think it's just a good environment for to build up, you know, to build up any fighting. We've been yeah. doing it for way back when we we're doing mixed martial arts out here. People used to come out here and train with us too, just because of the level of training that we we're doing. You know, obviously this sport is a little bit different, but we always have something to offer. So if you got something to offer, people are going to show up. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Uh, talk about too, man, because uh, you you brought it up, and, and I, I've seen you post on it. You said you're opening up like a like a community, like a gym for the community, and, yes. and stuff like that. Like, I, how how did that all come about, and how important is that for you? I guess to you know, it sounds cliche, but you know, to give back to your community. well, it's really important for me, man. It's something that we've been dreaming of up, and we've been working on for a long time since we got back. Because when I left. We had our mixed martial arts club here, so that at least there was somewhere to go train. But um, not only when I came back, there's no nowhere to train mixed martial arts, or boxing, or any kind of fighting uh, culture. But um, th there's really there was nowhere, you know, like uh, there's really this whole co Corona stuff kind of kind of like break up breaks up the community a little bit, you know. Yeah. And Puerto Ricans always been a really close community. They've always been like real family oriented. So we want to. Um, I started with a community program, not in Puerto Rico. Now, I, I actually used the community program in Puerto Rico as, as a teenager to, to, to fight. I fight, fought out of Puerto Rico. I was 14 and 2 or something like that out of Puerto Rico. But um, I started in, 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 in Lockport, in Joliet, when I lived in Joliet, Illinois, in a, in a township program. It was free for kids. And that's how I went with, with a coach, Steve Real, who gave his time to be there with us. And that's how I started my fighting journey, you know, um, People like that, they're willing to offer the time to students that are willing to dedicate themselves. Um, so we want to offer the opportunity. We have the ability to do it. So, And we have all the equipment. We talked to the mayor. The mayor was totally happy to do it. He gave us a place to immediately start working on it. So now we're going to be having a place for – we're going to try to do a boxing and jiu-jitsu team because uh, there is jiu-jitsu now, Olympic jiu-jitsu. Uh, they do competitions out here and the competitions and boxing out here. So we're going to build up a – Amateur team again, amateur jiu-jitsu team, you know, community, a lot of community work, you know, doing fundraisers, doing, doing like movie nights and fight nights for, so family could, you know, they could have the family nights and stuff like that. Just kind of give back to the community. Uh, it, it'll help us. It does help us. It gives us a place to train. It gives the, the gym its own source of income. Not us specifically, but the gym, does, we don't really have to worry. The gym just sustains itself. And, but it also gives back to the community and we're able to kind of pass it forward and uh, we're able to fill in this little hole that, it's missing in the community. So we're trying to just, it's, you know, it's just an uh, idea, but it is, you know, it's, it's, it's as altruistic as it can get, you know, <laughs> a lot of yeah, people don't yeah. understand it, you know, but that really is because that's how we started. So like, um, you know, it's really not, I'm not doing anything special. It's just, it's just a place for in the, and, and, uh, in our town, there's nowhere for the youth to go to. You got to think about posterity in the next generation. Uh, guys like me or guys that are don't, I, I always tell people, a lot of people they're happy to go home. You know, when the bell rings, they're happy to go home. But some kids aren't happy to go home, man. When they 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 dread going back home. So at least they have yeah. somewhere else to go to and somewhere where they can vent, somewhere where they can still grow. And it's uh, oh, I gotta stand now, haha. <laughs> um, uh, so it, it's just we're trying to make a positive influence in our community, and it's a lot easier to do it when you're doing when you're when you're working with individuals, you know, and we're working with the youth, just like uh, with us, you know. So. It's cool. It's a little project that we have. It's a little community project. It's awesome. And I know it's going to work out because we're doing it for the better good and there's no ill intention and it's all uh, for the betterment of, of our community. So it's, it's going to work, you know? And then obviously 
we have we do have our own private stuff that we're gonna do. We're gonna have our our jungle camp. That's a part, you know. Um, and you know that's gonna be just for fight. It's 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 its own thing. You know, it's not all. It, it is another void that we're trying to fill that fighters need. You know, like there's yeah. because there's places where MMA guys can go, and there's places where boxers can go. But that's some something that we're gonna fill a void that bare knuckle fighters are gonna need somewhere where they can go and just. Yeah. Go in the freaking trenches and just praying bare knuckle and just get freaking pounded into a freaking you know a weapon you know get pounded into, you know and that's that's what it's all about you know that's what we're well, that's what we're trying to do here so um it's just try to I'm trying to be a better fighter every time I come out but it gets to a certain point where you got to be a better person to be a better fighter so like that's we're we're giving our people opportunity to come out there and do that for themselves I can't do it for you. But it's just like we are, we're making the door here, like a, you know, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. You know, you're gonna be seeing in the future a team coming out of Mount Nawa. It's gonna be the jungle guys coming out of the jungle. There's gonna be guys coming out of the jungle in August. I'm gonna have one of my training partners who's had hundreds of amateur fights. He can help me out. He went out to the uh, Arizona fight. He's gonna be there. He's gonna fight with me on the same card. He's gonna de- make his de- professional debut as a bare knuckle fighter. He's been training with me for. Since the time I've been here, so it's gonna be real exciting. He's a head hunter, and he's a he's a, one of the hardest hitting guys I know. So we're gonna already gonna be bringing guys out of our team. So it's it's gonna be awesome, you know. It's gonna be a legacy of a uh, of fighting, you know. I I you know I I want to touch back, man, because uh, I think it's really important. You know, something you said. You said you know you got to be sometimes you got to focus on being a better person before you can focus on being a better fighter. And yes. I, you know what you're talking about with like, you know, uh, giving back to community and stuff like that. I think it shows that, you know, you remember where you came from. Right. Oh, yeah. and, and I think yeah. that's, I think some people, especially, um, you know, I, as some people forget it, especially whether it's, you know, whether they're like in a, you know, uh, I guess any business, any anything like an entertainment business or the fight game, sometimes people kind of lose track of that and they kind of yeah. end up, you know, they have their head in the clouds and they kind of yeah, fool they, themselves. They, you know, they feel that they're, they're better than that. They don't want to, they right. feel like they're being reduced. Like for me, in my mind, it's like, okay, I've been blessed. I work at home. I got my own gym. I got a place to train. Uh, you know, I'm getting all these things happening to me because of, of how my wife went down. So giving two hours, four days a week for the kids for free without think, asking anything in return. That's, yeah. that's nothing to me. I was like, well, well it, ke- it keeps you grounded yeah. too, right? I yeah. mean, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. it keeps you grounded and it, it yeah. gives you uh perspective. Yeah, exactly. On, you on, see on the everything. impact that you're making. You see how important it is. One person, you know, how, how you know, it's, it's the opposite of just, you know, the, this disempowerment movement that they have, you know, where you actually get to see firsthand that like one person can do a lot of damage, but you can do a lot of good too, you know? So, uh, no, uh, you know, it's a good reality check to stay, stay in there, stay in the trenches, you know. Thousand, thousand percent, man. Thousand percent. Um, that, that's that's really awesome. That's really awesome you're doing that, brother. So, yeah. like I said, I, I, a hundred percent, man, a thousand percent support from us. So, yeah, I, think I appreciate that, I, it, bro. I think that's, I can't wait awesome, to fight man. again. I love fighting, you know, besides all you know, the stuff that we're doing, oh, we're getting oh, ready for the next fight. We're fighting. This next guy that I'm fighting is like a test. He's uh, we have a name. We don't have a. And, and you said time. July, July, right? No, it's is August. This... It's August. August. Okay. Biloxi. You know they want okay. me in Biloxi. I, I got a lot of fans in that area. I sold a lot of. I've sold more tables than anybody else in Biloxi. They didn't mention that, but I had a lot of fans in Biloxi. You know? Okay. Um, and uh, so I mean, it makes sense to take having backs in Biloxi. Um. Um. So I'm more than happy to waste just a little bit more, and we'll be able to get a little bit of work done extra. While still training, we're gonna be training every day from here to then. So, I'm fighting a boxer. I think you know it's, it's gonna be a guy who's coming in for first fight. He's gonna be a guy with a lot of previous boxing experience, who's fought a lot of top guys, and it's gonna be a good test for me. And I'm just gonna, you know, you know, do my work, go out yeah. there, and just beat the crap out of this dude. You know, <laughs> I, I really, I'm, I'm, I want to rough this guy up, is, man. I'm excited I wanna to rough, know who it is. I want to rough this guy up. You know, he's the kind of guy like, I always profile my fighters. I don't change the way I fight. I just, I look at the way my guys fight, you know, I profile them down. I'm like, okay. And then I, I fight, no, trying to, trying to understanding my opponent. Is, is this so someone just, who's done bare knuckle before or he's come? Uh, I'm sure he's beat up a lot of junk dudes on the street. Yeah. You know? But, but not like BKFC, like officially. No, not, not okay. B, no, no, okay. Not BKFC. No. So it'll be good. It'll be, you know, this is one of those guys that's coming in. He's going to be the next big thing. You know, he's going to be, the I'm excited. Time. He's going to smash all the, he's going to smash all the guys, you know, the same old shit, you know, 
Yeah, uh, it's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna yeah. be, and I love just giving. You know, these guys are make my life my my work easy, so I can go in there and just smash this guy, rough him up, have a good time, big smile on my face, and then we'll move on to get that belt. You know, well, it, it's interesting, right? When you see, you know, because most of the people that come into bare knuckle are either you know MMA grounded or or traditional boxing grounded, right? That's where they come from. Yeah, especially I've I've noticed it more probably with the boxing side. You get yeah. these guys coming in and they just think that they're oh, gonna man. hop right in and be like, Oh man, this is both this is yeah. this is this is this ain't shit. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm gonna come it. in here, I'm gonna come in here and tear it up. Uh, you yeah, know, I love they, it. they don't understand the sweet science. I understand yeah, like, the yeah. sweet science and who will fight me? I'm like, no, right, I'm like right. ah, yep. give me that guy, please. <laughs> And, I, uh, and yeah. I, I think they quickly realized because we've had a couple traditional boxers yeah. come in, and I, I'm not going to single anybody out, but there are some who've come in and they don't do so well, right? Well, you know, you're going to come in, you're going to get your ass roughed up. You can't get roughed up like that in, in boxing. So you, and you can in, in MMA. So a lot of MMA guys are used to getting roughed up, but you're going to rough them up and let them know this, is, this isn't boxing. This is definitely an MMA. It ain't boxing. You know, it's a different sport. And we always try to make a point out of that to every guy well, that we fight. And I, yeah, and I think you're 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 right on, man. Like that that uh the big difference maker that everybody talks about is is uh you know the 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 ability to to take damage because you're going to take damage in bare knuckle. Yeah. Well, yeah. you don't so much, but you know. You're, <laughs> well, you're you gonna know, get hit. You're gonna, gonna get, get hit. hit. And I, I every I mean it doesn't matter how much you think you're gonna get into what you you know you know what you're getting into. It's yeah. gonna be uh it ain't gonna be the way you think it is when you, when you finally get in there. And it's going to be a reality check, you know. And, and there's going to there's always a point in every fighter where they have to decide if they if they if they want to keep going or he's going to lay down or they're going to go down. Because as soon as you get hit, I mean, my first fight, you know, I fought five rounds. You know, every punch, every time you get hit, you get rocks. You know, yeah. and it's and it's real and it hurts and it's yeah. it's no joke. Um, it's as real as it gets when as far as the damage and and the the severity of 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 of, of, of uh, the consequence of getting a, a fight. So uh, it's something you have to take real serious. And I've been saying this since I, my first fight because I came in respecting it, even though I didn't, you know, I kind of understood, but I came in respecting it. If you don't respect the sport, man, you're going to get hurt, you know, and I'm more than yeah. glad to hurt you. I don't have no problem with it because <laughs> that's the sport that we're in. You sign nine, I, I, I'll teach you, you know, I'll teach you the hard way. <laughs> shot, shot out of a cannon, you're the, the first thing that pops in your head. Yeah. All right. The, the four title fights uh, coming up in uh, just two weeks mm-hmm. for BKFC 18. Yeah. Who do you got? Uh, maybe just brief, maybe brief explanation, but just I just want to hear who you think is going to take it, the four title fights. Um, you know, uh, the uh, so we have uh, Uli versus versus yeah. Alves. Yep. Now Alves hasn't ha- faced any serious opposition in in, in in bare knuckle compared compared to Alves. So Alves does have a slight edge in that fight. I'm gonna give Alves a slight edge in that fight just because he's faced tougher competition. You know? Okay. And he's he's um and then what's the next one? Joy Beltran versus uh Shoemaker. Yep. That's that's an interesting fight. I mean yep. that's really um I'm gonna I'm gonna that's a hard one to pick, man. I'm gonna give it to the champ because the champ has proven one, over and over again that he could break people in, in five rounds. So um and um neither of these guys are undefeated. And you know, I'm I'm expecting the champion to come in and do what he always does. You know. So and then who else you got? Uh, Palomino, uh, Palomino and Good John. Palomino and Good John. See, Palomino and Good John. To me, that's an interesting fight uh, because Good John is a good fighter. He's a great bare knuckle fighter. Yeah. Um, I, I would say he's probably a better boxer than than um, than 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 Palomino. Even though Palomino is a better fighter than him, because boxing and fighting are a little bit different. Um, um, but uh, I think Palomino is overall a better fighter than him. But uh, it, it really depends uh, how if, if Palomino. I think he's gonna win, but if if he un- underestimates, um, Good John, he, he he might end up having a long fight. You know, so well, that um, that one too is real interesting to me. I see that going to a decision. That's gonna go to a decision no matter what to me. I, I well, really I, I, it, that one's gonna be really interesting to me, and I just and I don't want to uh, cut in too much, but like. With, no, it's, it, it's it's going to depend on what good John shows up because obviously, if the one that showed up against Felony shows yeah. up, I, I yeah, think it's, it's going to be a short night. 
right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be. It's, gonna be, yeah, but, it's not going to be very good. You know, we've heard. We've heard he was. You know, he was sick, and uh, it, it's, you know, everybody he, knows that. The, the, well, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah, knows about that. I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not hating. I'm not going to hate on him. I'm not going to yeah. hate on him. It is what it is. Yeah, um, yeah whatever. But yeah, which uh, we've seen. We've seen uh, people kind of underestimate people before, and it, it seems like that yeah. Pat, uh, Good John is taking this fight a hell of a lot serious. more seriously. Serious, and he's a he's a serious contender, you know, um, because he's just so elusive. He's hard to hit, even though he even when he takes damage, you know, he does get hit in the fights, but he's it's hard to give him. He's he, like me, like you hit me, but it's hard to just really hit me. It always makes you you always want to wish you could have hit him a little bit harder, you know. Yeah, um, and he's one of those guys that you always wish you could hit a little bit harder. And I don't think he's ever been stopped. So it'll be an interesting fight. Palomino's actually, he's real explosive. It'll really come down if, you know, can he handle the American power? Now, I don't know mm. it sounds, it's funny, but Americans fight different than over there. And, sure. And Palomino's going to be coming really hard. Sure. Um, and he's going to be coming with hard counters. They're going to, they're, they're, they're like, uh, like, dr you know, he, you, he drills counters a lot. He, he, he does a lot of counters. He's not like yeah. me with, I'm like watching you and doing that, you know, messing around. But he's he's spots you, blah, blah, you know. As soon as you know he's going off his reflexes, he does a really good reflex counters like that, and so it just depends on how how good John reacts to that. But it should be a good fight. It should go to a decision, and I will give uh, Palomino an edge on the decision just because of where he's at. And, um, and last but not least, uh, Joe Riggs versus Sector Lombard for the two hundred five. <sighs> um. Joe Riggs won his last fight. Hector Lombard, what? Who did he fight his last fight? Uh, Hector fought uh, uh, Kendall Grove his last fight. Yeah, yeah. See, um, he's two and zero, right? Yeah, he fought so, uh, David Mundell the first fight. Then he fought. I mean, uh, uh, I, I know they, I know Riggs. He fought. That one's hard to call, but I'm gonna just from what I know. I saw Riggs fight. Uh, uh, what what's his name? The the um. Uh, Brock Weaver. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. he he took Brock Weaver to a decision. Uh, and Brock Weaver was a pretty decent boxer. He's not, you know. Um, and I know I saw the fight with Mundell, and that was that was a really tough fight. And this is in a lower weight division, so it really depends on if 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 Joe Riggs doesn't. I would give it to Joe Riggs if he doesn't accept uh, absorb a lot of damage because. You know, uh, if 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 they're able, if if, if I think if it, if it turns into a long fight, I think Joe Riggs takes the fight in a long a longer fight. I think um, uh, Lombard takes an early fight. You know, I think if the fight goes into third, fourth round, I would I would give it to Riggs because Riggs is he's had a lot of bare knuckle fights and he's used to going long long rounds. Yeah. Uh, compared yeah. to compared to uh, um, compared compared to Lombard, who's only fought six rounds. You know, so I think Joe Riggs has how many bare knuckle fights he fought in England a couple of times? Four, uh, three or four. Yeah, he's got a yeah, lot of rounds. Four. Under his belt, you know, and that and that a lot of people don't understand how much that takes into what comes into play when it comes to bare knuckle because it's a very very different experience. It's kind of traumatizing and creepy. It's crazy when you first start. So it's like compared to when you first start, you know, as you grow as a fighter. People come become more and more. They turn more into like animals. You know, they're more and more comfortable being in there. So that that does that as a big factor. I, like I said Joe Rich can pull it off if it doesn't get if it doesn't get caught. I'm gonna give it to Riggs just because it's the toughest competition. To, uh, it's a huge jump in Lombard the competition. Even though yeah. Joe Riggs is not known for having the you know a, 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 gr a gr granite chin or anything, but it's bare knuckle. So um, it really depends on who if he if if he can land. The bigger shots early, and, I, and if if you can't land the biggest shot early, you got to take hand fatigue into consideration, and uh, you know, and all the in the weight cut and everything. And I would definitely, I'm just gonna pick Riggs. That's my long winded explanation. All right, <laughs> fair, fair enough, man. Fair enough, <laughs> you let me keep going. I just keep going. I'm like, because I don't know the guys like personally. Like guys, I, some guys I train with, or I, I've seen them fight enough. Where I could be like, yeah, I, I'll pick this guy that way. I, I've seen, uh, I've seen both Good John and and and. Palomino fight enough where I could say, oh, that's going to be a lot better than people think, but I still would give a slight edge to uh, to the champ, you know? 
Is no, it, it, it'll be a, I think it's going to be a solid ass fucking card, man. Yeah. And dude, I tell you what, once you get more info, because I really want to know who the fuck you're fighting in August, as soon as you get it, please pass oh, he's it on. A tough so, guy. He's a tough I, guy. I, I, I can't he's wait. The next man. big thing, man. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait. Brother. But uh, yeah, yeah. hey, look, man, we I appreciate you always, brother. Yeah. I don't want to keep yeah. you, but yeah. uh, we'll get you back on soon, and we'll. I, I want to talk about who exactly you're fighting. I want to get that info. So yeah, we we'll, got. We'll, we'll gonna, talk yeah, about yeah. We'll be able to smack talk a little bit. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll smack talk, and we still got to do our after dark uh, episode. So oh yeah, we have to. Yeah, we'll talk about the yeah. cr the real yeah. shit, the crazy yep, shit. Yep, yep. So, all right, <laughs> brother. Take care. The hour with Bandito. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Appreci appreciate your time, brother. Hey, yeah, thank you.